Hi everyone, it's Matthew Neely from Hillcrest. I thought I would give you an update of COVID-19 at Hillcrest and happy St. Patrick's Day 2020. It's a memorable day for sure. Uh, let me start by just saying that we have no confirmed or suspected cases of COVID-19 at Hillcrest. Um, we are being very careful and very aggressive in our measures of uh, mitigation to try to reduce the risk of any spread on campus. Now, no organization is fireproof in that regard, but the, the risk of a quick spread has been mitigated and we hope that no one becomes infected. So we're doing all we can and following the recommendations of our national, state, county, and local leaders in that regard. So let me start by just saying thank you to the residents of Hillcrest. I know that this is a loving community and that people have many friends and that you all care about each other and want to be with each other. You're very active, very healthy, very uh, fun and loving people who want to be together. And this has been difficult for many of you. So just bear with this temporary isolation. It will come to an end and we'll get back to our normal, normal community. But we have some good news to share with you that may help you help ease that burden of isolation which I'll get to in a few minutes. Um, first, I'd like to just share a few regulatory pronouncements, that, or excuse me, uh, government pronouncements that have been made. Uh, I'll start with the White House. Um, obviously, avoiding social gatherings is one of the recommendations. Uh, for family members, it, will, it is uh, to not visit nursing homes or retirement communities unless you provide critical assistance. And we actually ask that uh, during this time, that you allow residents to home isolate so that they're um, not uh, they're not at uh, risk of obtaining or becoming infected uh, from a visit from a loved one especially that would be terrible so if you are an older person which is uh, it says to to all of us to stay home and away from other people so if you can self-isolate for a period in your home um, read a book, do the things that you've always wanted to do, just try to bear it the best you can. And, and I'll tell you a little bit about what's going to happen. Uh, Ryan and the Resident Life and Wellness team are starting a daily uh, publication. It's going to be given to all assisted living residents. It will include games, puzzles, contests, exercises, and journaling cues. There will be a snack delivered with it in more, and this is in Maple Court, Birch Court, and Cedar Court. And as that's delivered, each resident will be asked if they would like a daily contact. And if so, then the staff will daily contact you by phone just to check in with you to make sure all is well. And for those who live outside of those care environments in residential living independently, you will receive a week's worth of puzzles exercises, journal includes options for online entertainment, etc. You will also be asked if you'd like a contact each day, and if you do, then someone will reach out to you each day to make sure that you're well. Uh, we invite all residents to, to contact each other. Please call one another, express your friendship and love. People are feeling a little bit isolated, and a call from a friend can mean a lot. We also will continue with our monthly happenings, which will uh, include a self-isolation bingo prize, a bingo game and a prize, which Resident Life and Wellness is creating. So you can access information on online entertainment and some information on how to access Friday evening programs. We are gonna have Friday evening programs, but they will be online via Zoom. So with that, um, hopefully you'll have a little more uh, interesting opportunities to engage. Uh, back to our government. Uh, our governor, uh, Governor Newsom, said on Sunday he called for the home isolation of all persons over 65 and those with chronic conditions. He also tightened the visiting or visitation protocols to only end of life visits. This applies to all skilled nursing facilities and residential care facilities for the elderly, which of which Hillcrest is one. So what that really means is that we are asking for no visitation into the home. So if you're a resident of Hillcrest and you have housekeepers coming once a week outside of Hillcrest staff, um, please 
avoid that for now. If your family members and want to come visit your loved one at Hillcrest, please do it via Skype or via FaceTime or via telephone. And um, if you need help doing that or your loved one needs help, let us know and we'll try to set that up so that you can communicate one with, the, one with another. Um, so no visitations. The county health officer uh, sent out a health officer order for, for the control of COVID-19. It's a multi-page document. I'm not going to read it to you. But what it, it treated was um, limitations or prohibitions on group events and gatherings, required social distancing measures, and closure of certain businesses. We already know that we're not having group events at Hillcrest. So that really, our, our um, measures are even more strict than the county officer is requiring. And this is for the good and safety of our residents. He gave um, a, an order that all permanent food facilities may only prepare and offer food that is provided to customers via delivery, pickup, or drive-through. Well, we started that a few days before this edict came out. So we're, we're in compliance there. Um, it is, it is important that we socially, uh, I, socially distance ourselves from one another physically, but not emotionally. We can still call each other. We can still communicate to one another in kind and loving ways. And we encourage you to do that. Now, I'd, I'd like to speak just a little bit about the, um, the dining situation. I went shopping for my wife this week and I, saw the empty shelves and I um, saw the, the panic on some of the faces um, of some of the people who were in the store and there was concern and people were lining up and the, and the energy was just a little um, disconcerting. I, it made me feel so grateful that we're a part of Hillcrest. Residents of Hillcrest have such, such a different story to tell. Not only are you safely housed, but you have access to three meals a day prepared for you in two dining rooms. Uh, you have transportation, you have access to healthcare, you have 24 hour security guards roaming the community, and you have people who love you, who are all around. So I'm just very grateful. To that end, I wanna share what Dining Services is doing. For those of you who do want certain staples, um, the Dining Services is not only gonna be serving food, each meal to any resident who wishes it and associate who's working who would like to to purchase food but we will also be opening up an opportunity to obtain groceries through our dining services department so now if you need a loaf of bread a dozen eggs some milk yogurt cottage cheese it's, um, you can purchase those at very reasonable just rates and obtain them right here at Hillcrest through our dining services department. For those of you with dining dollars, you can use your dining dollars to obtain those foods too. So please do that. Um, th and just a note on the food, there was a, a few people were concerned about be being able to access plant-based diets in the dining opportunities that are currently being given. Um, that is now going to be available through the dining services. So I share that with you and invite you to, if that pertain, if you are on a plant-based diet, to please make that known and they will try to accommodate you. Um, a couple other things. Um, ambiguity during these times, uh, difficult times, can be disconcerting. It can uh, create a sense of fear. I'd like for you to not uh, be overtaken by that impression. You live in a community that is actively and proactively obeying and implementing measures for your safety and security. And it's my belief that if you never come in contact with a person with coronavirus, the likelihood of you obtain, getting it from, from is very low from anyone because you're not obtaining it from them. So by home isolating, you're going to protect yourself and really there was a, a message shared with me. It was from Rabbi Yosef Kanevsky of Los Angeles. And I'd like to just share this with you. 
The very last thing we need right now is a mindset of mutual distancing. Every hand that we don't shake must become a phone call that we place. Every embrace that we avoid must become a verbal expression of warmth and concern. Every inch and every foot that we physically place between ourselves and one another must become a thought as to how we might help that other person should the need arise. Let's stay safe and let's draw one another closer in a way we've never done before. With that, I want to thank you all for, again, your patience and your commitment. And until next time, have a great day and happy St. Patrick's Day.